Stick around and I'll show you guys how to build this for your next barbecue or you can sell it online and you won't believe how much they're charging for these online. Now let's get to building. So here's your cut list. As you can see, it's not gonna take a lot of wood to do this. The bottom dimensions are approximate because they're gonna be based off the actual dimensions of the wood you're using. And I'll show you what I mean later. The one by fours I got at my local big box store were trash as usual. And uh, so I had to rip down a one by eight. Then my breaker blew while I was cutting it. So <laughs> luckily I was past the four foot mark. Then I forgot to adjust my roller stand and it was too short to catch my pieces. If you're not making mistakes, you're not doing woodworking. Not to toot my own horn, but I finally got it right on the last cut. Go me. Then I cut my two one by fours and my two one by sixes down to their final sizes of four foot. Now I'm gonna lay out some decorative curves into the sides of the two one by sixes. We'll start by marking eight inches from the end of one board. Then we'll mark a line one inch in from each side. I probably should have clamped them to keep them from moving, but hey, I like a challenge. Now I'm using an eight ounce can of stain to mark this curve. And no, I am not MacGyver, but if you know who that is, leave it in the comments. If you don't have a jigsaw to make these curves, you can always use a coping saw. And if you don't have a coping saw, you can change it from a curve to a 45 or whatever angle is you're comfortable with or you like, and just use a handsaw. And if you don't have a handsaw, just chew it off like a beaver. Now I cut off the remaining one inch on the world's weirdest table saw. Notice there's no miter slots. Okay, so to cut the one, four one by fours that I need, I need to make sure that they're the same width as the one by six. Usually a one by six is five and a half, but that's rough. So you gotta make sure that you check it like I just did. Okay, now using your same trailer park compass, make a circle on the top of that one by six that is actually looks like a one by four now because we cut one inch off each side. So it pretty much is a one by four on the top and a one by six on the last eight inches. So the last piece I need to cut is the bottom piece. Now I originally cut it four foot, but I'm adding up all my side pieces together so I can subtract it from the bottom's total length. This will make more sense when you see it all come together. And then after I cut it the length, I had to trim down the width of it to match the rest of my side pieces. This is the second one I had to make because the first one, I cut it to length on the wrong side of the line. Don't. My bottom board had a loose knot in it that I filled in with CA glue and sawdust. If you guys want a full tutorial on how to do this, just let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on how to do it. Now that we got all our pieces cut, time to start sanding. As much as I hate sanding, this is where I get to clean up all those hacky jigsaw cuts I made. Now you don't need one of these bench top sanders, you can sand these with anything. But if you do a lot of small part sanding, these are well worth the money. But they won't work on a double chin, so learn from my mistakes. The rest of the sanding I just did with a random orbital sander and a sanding block. Oh, whoa, sorry, that was for my OnlyFans. Okay, time for assembly. First thing I do is I'm gonna screw one of the little one by fours to the bottom one by six. I just clamped the one by six to my workbench and then I left a little lip for the one by four to sit on. You can use screws here because this part's gonna be covered. The rest of this is gonna be all nails. And then just repeat that step on the next side. Now apply some glue to the first one by four we just screwed onto the base. Then you can nail or screw those together. Then glue, clamp, and nail the last one by four on. Now just flip it around and repeat that whole process on the other side. We're getting splinters all our life, living in the woodworker's paradise. Just go remix. Okay, so now it's time to put on the front and back one by four. Make sure you put the nicest side facing out. I'm using Tight Bond 3 glue because it's gonna be outside. Then clamp it on, nail it in place, flip it around and repeat the whole process. Once you get it all nailed up, now it's time to get it ready for stain. First thing I need to do is fill in all these nail holes with some wood putty. Good Lord, my head looks like a butterball turkey caught in a net. Okay, now that all my wood putty's dry, I'm gonna sand it all down, round over some edges, just double check everything. Uh, make sure it's all ready for stain. Here's me flexing my vacuum remote, like it's made by Ferrari and I didn't get it from Walmart. So after a good sanding, I like to vacuum it all out, make sure I don't leave any dust behind. Wow, I am really proud of this thing, like I just cured Dunlap. Now I'm putting down some paper so I don't mess up my Gucci workbench. Gucci workbench. Okay, I'm using this Bare Premium oil-based wood stain. I really like this color Provincial. It looks really good on pine. Pine is really hard to stain, especially when you get it from the big box store. It's usually either over dried or not dried enough, but this really makes it look good. Okay, here's Vanna Wide showing you the spar urethane that I used to clear coat this. 
I chose a spar urethane because it's going to be outside and it's going to be in the elements. So this is going to give it that much more protection. Now I'm using a water-based spar urethane. I, I would have went with an oil base, but I already had this and I, I didn't want to go buy another one. Some people say you shouldn't use a water-based clear coat over top of an oil-based stain. I haven't had a problem as long as I give it proper time to dry. Even on a stain that says it's a two hour and then you can clear coat, if you're putting water base over top of it, you should give it at least 48 hours. Okay, after you let that clear coat dry for a few hours, come back and hit it with a 320, 400 grit sandpaper, then re-clear coat it, do that a couple more times so you get about three coats. It'll come out so smooth and nice when you're done. Okay, so I got these hooks from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. They're about 20 bucks. You can find different hooks if you want, if you if there's something you want to use that's cheaper. I just really like the way they look like railroad spikes. I put it three quarter inches from the top, then I pre-drilled and screwed the top hole, leveled the bottom, and then pre-drilled and screwed the bottom hole. Okay, now you need about a six foot section of the Sissel rope. Uh, Sissel, Cecil, however you pronounce it. You get it from Home Depot, you can get it on Amazon. I got mine from Home Depot, it was like 72 cents a foot or something like that. Then you need another one foot section. You're gonna use the one foot section, we're gonna make hoops out of it, and you're gonna use the other section to like wrap around here. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Okay, now you're gonna make a hoop in your rope, somewhere about like that. And if you use these same hooks that I use with this little thing on the end, you wanna make it so this kind of clicks on there, so it doesn't easily just flop off you see where you gotta kind of gotta like pop it on and then it kind of holds it in place now that you got that you can put a piece of tape on there to hold it you can put a string and then I'll show you the next step okay so here was my extra piece that I got what you're gonna do is you're gonna untwist it then you're gonna cut one of those twists off is what I did then from that twist there's multiple strands you're gonna pull one of those off uh, thank you for holding that for me. No problem. And uh, thank you for cutting it for me. No problem. So then you're going to take this. First you want to put a little bit of hot glue in between here. Or you can use uh, CA glue um, with an activator. And it doesn't matter how this looks because you're going to wrap some twine around it anyways. Then put a little dab up in the top in between the two ropes and push your string in there with a, uh, with a nail to get it started. And then just keep wrapping and put in a dab of glue. Wrap, put a dab of glue until you get all the way down. Now you're gonna have a lot of flyaways as my wife calls it when it's in somebody's hair and you're just gonna trim those off at the end. Doing this rope is the last part and then I'm really excited to show you guys all the different ways you can decorate this thing. It's very versatile. So to finish this off, just do the same thing you did to start it. Pull the string up through the middle, put a little bit of hot glue, hold it there with a nail for a second till it cools and then cut off the extra. Now just get some scissors and cut off all those flyaways like you're doing a little manscaping before a hot date. Okay, so now take the rope you just made, hook it on the one side, then we're gonna look and see. You wanna have a bit of a droop, but not too much. I'd say probably about right there. It looks like you might've almost been able to get away with a five foot piece, a five foot six, but rather have six foot and have too much than not enough. So about right there, you wanna have a bit of a, a, a hang in it, about right there. And then you're just gonna repeat that same thing on this side to where you have two hoops. Okay, so now I'll show you some different ways you can display this either in your backyard or for pictures online. And then I will reveal how much these things sell for online and you won't believe it. All right, so here's some different ways you can decorate it. I got these, I know it looks a little funny because this one's heavier and it's pulling it down, but when you have all the same one on there, it doesn't do that. These are some lanterns, I got these from Hobby Lobby. If you don't have a Hobby Lobby by you, I got these bottles from the dollar store. You can put little lanterns in here, little lights. You could put, I've seen people do fairy lights. You know, it starts getting at night, 4th of July. Oh, 4th of July, speaking of 4th of July. Got my American flag. Boom, you can do that with a regular bottle. You don't need these little bottles, but they're only $1.25, I think they are now. I don't think it's really a dollar anymore. And then in the bottom part, you can put whatever you want. You put, fill it with oranges, apples, fruits, all different fruits. You can even do something like put some candles in there with some flowers. These are from uh, Walmart. These are the food prep containers. They fit in here perfectly. You can put different foods in here. You could, like, you don't have to worry about it messing up the wood or the wood contaminating it. I see people fill these with watermelon. I also have some fairy lights that I put around the whole thing. We dim the lights a little bit. There you go, you set the mood at uh, the holidays or at whatever barbecue. 
and it makes the perfect centerpiece. There you go. That's barbecue vibes right there. Playing some old school 90s jams. Okay, so this is what these are going for online. This is Bed Bath & Beyond. They're gone for almost $500. It cost me less than 50 to make this. That's a 500% markup.